Russian President Vladimir Putin marked the second anniversary of Russia laying claim to four annexed regions in Ukraine with a recorded address on Monday. He accused the West of turning Ukraine into a military bridgehead aimed at Russia, and said Russia was trying to solve the conflict peacefully. Not only Donbass, but also Crimea and other Russian regions were designated as targets, he said. Further developments fully confirm the necessity and validity of the special military operation, its truly liberating nature. Putin said Russia remains proud of its soldiers fighting in Ukraine and Russian border regions. Вы знаете, чем закончились эти переговоры? Ложью, подлогом и обманом со стороны западных элит, которые за это время превратили Украину в свою колонию, в военный плацдарм, нацеленный на Россию. В качестве целей были намечены не только Донбасс, но и Крым, и другие российские регионы. Дальнейшее развитие событий полностью подтвердило необходимость и обоснованность специальной военной операции, ее поистине освободительный характер. Сегодня все вместе мы отстаиваем безопасное, благополучное будущее для наших детей и внуков. Нашу общую судьбу, память о достижениях и победах великих предков. Верность их традициям и заветам. Эти чувства дают силы участникам специальной военной операции. Сражаясь сейчас в Донбассе и в Новороссии, отстаивая Курские, Белгородские, Брянские рубежи, они защищают всю огромную, прекрасную, любимую нами Россию. Мы гордимся нашими героями. Шандец просто горит, копил Вот в этом месте стояла дверь, да. да, вот здесь. Да. Это коридорная дверь. Да. Да, ну вот тут прибыли здесь, здесь не было, баллон не был. Баллон были все вот здесь. Так. Ты как сука повыбивала, да на, на сколько аж улетела. Ничего себе, да смотри. Russian occupiers on the Eastern Front are advancing westward towards the Oskol River. In this way, the invaders are likely trying to cut the Ukrainian operational strategic group Kortitsia in half in this area, which will complicate the reinforcement of troops and prevent them from supporting each other. At the same time, as Forbes writes, this is costing the Russians dearly. They captured the village of Pechanoi to the east of the river back in July. Now the occupiers are trying to reach the river near the village of Glushkovka. 
On Thursday, for example, the enemy launched an offensive with about 100 armored vehicles in three directions, shelling Ukrainian positions north and south of the salient. Ukrainian brigades and battalions, including the 77th Air Mobile Brigade, fought back with drones, artillery and anti-tank missiles. To the south, the line was held by the 92nd Airborne Assault Brigade and the 40th Artillery Brigade is close enough to the Peschani salient to fire on the enemy anywhere in the salient. The invaders suffered heavy losses. The 92nd Brigade reported the destruction of 14 units of equipment, 3 tanks, 5 BMP combat vehicles, an unspecified armoured personnel carrier, an MTLB armoured tractor, three trucks and a golf cart. The 77th Brigade repulsed an enemy attack in its area but did not specify how much equipment was burned. Drone video of the battle showed at least six immobilized and burning vehicles, including armored turtle tanks. Overall, the occupiers lost at least a fifth of their vehicles, which slowed the Russian advance towards the Oskol River and gave local Ukrainian troops time to strengthen their defenses. However, the enemy can still win its battle on this section of the front. The enemy will soon reach the left bank of the Oskol River in the glushkovka kruglaikovka area and divide the Kortitsia bridgehead of the Joint Forces Group on the Oskol River into two parts. The Ukrainian Center for Defense Strategies predicts. At the same time, this could be another Pyrrhic victory for them. They gain certain positions, but at the cost of a large amount of equipment and people who are increasingly difficult to replace.